So I have with me the head of uh, sales and marketing at Tata EV, uh, Mr. Vivek Srivats. And uh, we have a very valid question here where, you know, uh, Tata Sierra, very nostalgic, Tata Harrier, and it's coming back. So what's the plan? I mean, the plan obviously is to uh, refresh the nostalgic brand name of Sierra, but bring it now with the same essence as before you know the sierra was known for its huge space ability to carry uh, more than a few people in it and also known for its uh, ability to go beyond the normal roads you know and the iconic design of the sierra as well so we think we bought all of it back the design the ability to go off-road uh, the ability to carry people in space and all of that in an ev avatar so there's nothing better to signify that it's a bit of the past into the future. Okay, uh, The plan is to launch it in late uh, 2025. Uh, so that's the plan. But what you see is a production intent which is very, very close to what the actual car will look. I would say in excess of 90% which is uh, of the car will become true in terms of production. Harrier EV, we all know, you know, it's, it's proven um, five-seater high SUV model. Um, very, very appreciated for the kind of robust drive it offers the kind of ride quality and the design of course and we thought what better than the harrier to you know uh, go four by four or all-wheel drive you know so i think uh, it's uh, again we decided to do all-wheel drive in an electric car to yes. showcase that that's how the future is going to be so with harrier i think it's a very sweet spot in terms of getting a proper sized suv which is very robust ability to go really uh, away from the road at the same time have a good amount of space and you know comfort inside so both are very uh, good sweet spots for the customers is our thinking aria will come to the market around um, in a year from now i would say 2024 okay yeah. So we already know that uh, the Gen 1, which is the Ziptron, which was the Tiago, uh, Tigor and the Nexon. Uh, so this should be Gen 2. Uh, could you throw some light on the Gen 2? Yes. So you're right. You know, uh, both, uh, you know, the Sierra and the Harrier are part of the Gen 2 architectures. In fact, I would say the Sierra will be a Gen 2 plus car. The Avinia will be the Gen 3 architecture. Uh, while the Gen 1, we did call it a Ziptron, but we thought we'll just call it Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, the future. Uh, in terms of development of Gen 2 over Gen, uh, Gen 1 is obviously these are, uh, you know, highly modified uh, architectures from the ICE side. But earlier we had just, we were just fitting the battery into the ICE architectures, but now the underbody of the ICE architecture has been completely uh, redone uh, to make it more, uh, I would say, usable for EVs. So it releases a lot of space, uh, it makes it absolutely flat, uh, enabling us to put a larger batteries, but also pack in a lot more technology in terms of uh, the electrical architecture. So Gen 2, Gen 2 Plus, you will see, will release a lot of, of course, range, a lot more power, a lot more flexibility of use like all-wheel drive, but also uh, in terms of connectivity, in terms of infot infotainment, in terms of driver assist systems, it enables us to release a lot of technology. So the next question is from Gaurav and he wants to know that high speed AC charging 22 kilowatt, uh, would it be possible in this and also about the ADAS features? Yeah. So yes, I can confirm obviously that the AC uh, charging speeds will be enhanced in Gen 2. I would not like to put a number or specification right now because technology is changing very fast and uh, you know, we like to confirm that closer to the launch. Uh, ADAS is something I can confirm. Uh, there will be uh, ADAS definitely. Uh, but again, because of the timeline differences, you might have different versions of ADAS in each of the cars. Because technology again is moving so rapidly, we might decide to give higher level of ADAS in each of these cars. So in the Altros Racer, you have the advanced uh, infotainment uh, display. So uh, is that possible to be put into an Exxon EV? No, uh, unfortunately not, um, you know, it is a OE part with a lot of, uh, you know, hardware integration as well as software integration, so it would not be possible to retrofit it. Yeah. Even if they can pay? No, I mean, pay, I mean, if it's possible, we might have given it without payment also, but it's not possible, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, we don't see any door handles, I mean, are they there, not there, is it hidden yeah. somewhere? <laughs> door handles are definitely there, 
but uh, there's a growing trend of invisible door handles or flush fitted door handles on the sierra we have flush fitted uh, and on the safari we have a very unique door open mechanism which is a single button mechanism and the door is motorized so that it pops out um, but uh, i think both aesthetically this works but also in terms of aerodynamics it has a little bit of impact so this again is a little bit future of ev but also future of design yeah yeah, yeah looks very sleek though so vivek uh, why sierra and why not something more iconic like the nano yeah see firstly sierra obviously um, you know the world is moving towards suvs uh, with the sierra tata motors pioneered the suv lifestyle in india you know it was the first lifestyle suv and uh, it's the right time to bring back the iconic brand name but also the iconic car which is a iconic suv into the market uh, it's about getting in the right product at the right time as simple as that um, about the other products um, you know made it uh, today's regulations really uh, don't make it feasible for us to bring uh, uh, some of our earlier products um, because with the kind of uh, crash impact regulations the safety regulations coming in um, it becomes impractical you know every product there's a price uh, ceiling to which people will buy it and beyond that it becomes uh, uh, not an attractive proposition both for the manufacturer as well as the customer and i would actually turn around and say that probably the best package today you get is the tiago ev you know uh, which has the drivability of uh, electric it's the most easiest driving car ever possible so i would urge our customers to try out the tiago forget their brand names <laughs> and look at how easy and the kind of space it offers as you mentioned the harrier and the sierra is 24 25 and 22 we had the tiago ev so 23 anything punch ev or the nexon ev upgrades or anything i think that the you know forum members know better about our product launch strategy than myself but um, you know um, today when we launch new products into the market we need to allow little time for it to settle down yes, i mean the ev market is quite uh, restricted you know we still have don't don't have so many people opting to buy evs and rapidly introducing new models is not going to help uh, the manufacturer nor the dealer nor customers you know we don't want people who to buy a car and suddenly feel that you know i could have bought something else you know uh, so uh, we will allow the tiago to settle down um, and um, we have a clear product life cycle we have gone on record saying we'll have 10 products in the market by 2025 uh, and um, of course there are some products we have not announced now but they are very much part of the anvil i won't like to put a timeline in place or uh, timing but uh, you will have something to look forward to in 2023 for sure is what i would say yeah